and I had a, like a four horse motor on it. And I'd go out before all any fisher people or anything came out, and I'd be sitting out in the middle of the lake, and I just watched the waves. You know. And invariably, the first fishing boat that came out, they'd come roaring out in their bass boat, and they'd see me out there, and I'm not fishing. He's unconscious. <laughs> and they'd come running up, and they'd say, "Are you okay? Is your motor all right?" And I'd say, "I'm, I'm working." <laughs> they all laugh. Uh, say, "Oh yeah, we like that." Absolutely. Question? Yeah. Are you going to add more dark to the middle of the, of the blue or is it done? Nope. Okay, so the blues I are done. I wouldn't mess with that now. Yeah. Okay. And because as I said, one of the things is you want, one of the things that gives this illusion the power that it has is the fact that I've got really, really smooth gradations. That's yeah. why I do those yeah, little wet washes. Yeah. They're just they're real just smooth, oily smooth. And then you get these real sharp, distinct edges. And it's the contrast between those yeah. sharp edges and yeah. a real smooth water that makes people, they kind of blink and say, oh, it looks like water. Right? Um, and, and so you don't, you, if you started messing around in here now, you get a lot of brush strokes and stuff. And, yeah. And you, yeah. The whole thing would fall apart. Yeah. And the other question is, why did you put this dark shadow here instead of ah. over there? Well, I can... Uh, well, was there a reason or...? Well, I, my, <laughs> Sorry. I sort of didn't carry it over that far, but you know, I could, I could uh, sort of do this. Don't show off. Yeah. <laughs> of course, now, see, as soon as I did that, I thought, well, you know, that's a lot browner than the rock up there, so I better put something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you make the rock over. match the reflection rather than the uh, uh, But as long as they match, that's the key. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. It, it, the general answer to your question is, okay, you've got a lot of waves up here packed close together yeah. uh, because you're seeing a very narrow angle. And what they tend to do is average the value and color of everything that's above them. For instance, uh, this here, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm See, watching. this doesn't match that. Right. Yeah, there we go. It kind of matches this one, but it's a sort of an average. It's, mm -hmm. it's this whole thing is yeah. what's making that dark line. Because, uh -huh. because you've got thousands of waves here and they're at all different angles, so you're seeing a little bit of everything above it. Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing here. Okay, see, now you see a line come down here. You don't see this reflected. In there. Right. Yeah. It becomes a straight line. You don't see mind. this one. You don't see this reflected. Isn't in that much. interesting? Right. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, David, would you want to paint these mm. these reflections that you don't see because they're, the waves are so tight at more blurry, soft edge? Or Well, you've seen what I did. Yeah. I mean, that's... And then, for as the sort of finishing touch. Um, I'm not going to paint every wave up there, it will drive me nuts. Mm -hmm. um, but how frequently you'll see my paintings, if you look close, you'll see for instance, you know, the wave doesn't stop just because you happen to be a place where it's reflecting the cliff rather than the sky. In other words, this wave there's a wave here that faces towards you, and it continues all the way through mm -hmm. the sky the reflection, the cliff the reflection. The see? The oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't see it from here, so I don't know. I, I kind of. It sort of creeps up. Okay. Thank you. Uh, but as I said, what you know, I'll. I'll Add in sort of a little dark extension of this sky reflection mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Uh, you've mm -hmm. got to be careful not to make that too dark. And as I said, you want to make those adjustments fast. Mm -hmm. You don't want to mess around. You look at something, say, "Oh, it's too dark. It's too this. It's too." That. You do it right away. Mm -hmm. You you have to have feedback in your head and be conscious of what's happening on the paper. It's, uh, watercolor is a lot more like a sport than it's like oil painting. 
because you've got timing and you've got the precision and you've got speed and a lot of things and a lot of feedback between your eyes and the brush all have to happen fast mm -hmm. like catching a baseball or hitting a baseball or something it, it all has to be coordinated because the water isn't going to sit around waiting for you um, but at any rate what I, to get back to the, the original question which as I recall is what happens do you put waves up in here who asked the question? I did. Oh. And is that, is that, is that basically looking, the question? Yeah, I'm looking at mm -hmm. these edges between this dark and this light, and it looks more like a soft edge treated like a soft edge. Yeah. And as you that's come closer, right. it's, it's well, um, at, at, And more that's hearted. exactly what I do, okay? Um, it, it's, <laughs> it's a soft edge up here, right. and okay. right now that soft edge bothers me because this has got a lot of raw sienna in that edge, so I'm going to put your burnt sienna. I'm going to put some burnt sienna in this soft edge, and that's what it is at this point. It's just a soft edge. Okay. And, and then, as you come down towards, okay, now obviously at some point you've got these waves. Sure. <laughs> so you've got to kind of sneak up on that. You know, you come down here at some point and say, okay, I'm tired of the soft edge, I'm going to put in, you know, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Now that's, that's probably uh, too brown yeah. and too dark. But you just, you go at a point of your choosing, you say, I'm going to leave the soft edge and I'm going to go to this, to the waves. Yeah. So somewhere it transitions. Yeah. Okay. And, and yeah. where that is depends on you, but it mm -hmm. should be about at the same height all the way across okay. the picture because otherwise it, it'll look a little funny. Okay. Um, but then you can, when you start painting in the individual waves, as I said, you got to remember that waves don't just stop because they come to the edge of a cliff, they mm. keep going. Mm. Um, and to make this transition a little more subtle and to fool people so they don't notice it, this is a little more noticeable transition. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, I'm, what I'll do is I'll sneak a couple little tiny lines further up in here. You know, not just sort of subtle. You don't really see them much, but they're there. And, and it sort of fools people's eyes into thinking, okay, now where does this stop and where does mm -hmm. it start? That's why people are always asking me that question because they can't tell looking at the painting. Yeah, yeah. So where did that transition happen? Well. Yeah. I decided it's going to happen right here, but then I, I threw in a, some some red herrings for your eyes so uh -huh. that you don't really realize that that's what I did. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot of sort of magic tricks mm -hmm. happening in any painting, and uh, there's a you know, I'm trying to remember the name of that po the blue guitar. You ever read that in poetry? Uh, no, oh, this my. is a poem about the Picasso right, painting. Right, right. Who's it by? Um, William Carlos Williams? I can't remember. I mean, this is high school. You know, I'm going a long way. I'm going a long way back. I graduated high school in '64, so you know, <laughs> I don't know for sure, but uh, it starts out things are not as they are when played upon the blue guitar. Well, uh, you know, your painting. I don't care how realistic a painting a painter you are. If you're any good, you're always cheating and playing games with people's eyes a little bit. You know, it's, it's just it's just part of the fun. I mean, there are people that will just uh, and literally I've seen these in the arts for the park. Uh, people who will take a slide projector and they'll project their painting up and they'll do every I think every pixel on the slide. They they have this sort of pointillist thing where they. And, and it would drive me nuts to paint a picture yeah. that way. Oh, we've got a member in the art that does that. People do that. Projects uh, it on a canvas or on a... I, pro I guess projected on a canvas, yeah. I think the Arts for the Parks one that I saw, it looked like they oh. had projected a picture on a canvas, then taken a little brush and matched the color at every oh, point. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Like paint by numbers. Yeah. And uh, I don't really think of that as art, because, you know, there's no subtlety to it. You're not... Uh, I'm not sure what I'd call it, but as I said, the fun for me with a painting is you're full of people. There's always exaggerations, and there's always shortcuts, and there's always 
all sorts of things going on. And most of the people that buy paintings, they know that, you know, and, and it's part of the fun is, is that they'll see that. Now, if you paint commission portraits of dogs or commission portraits of people, you can't really get away with that. It's right. got to be, this doesn't look, this looks like a caricature or somebody. It doesn't really, you know, yeah, uh, so you don't have that luxury, but for the most part, I mean, I, I think the painting, you know, you should have some little bit of fun with people. One question, the horizon line along the rocks, you know how you yeah. here with that? I Are you just a couple? I haven't done it yet, really. Yeah. Uh, and that could be a real dark line. And, you know, I'm running so late, I'm really not going to get around to everybody in the class. Maybe I'll just continue demoing that. <laughs> What do you oh, think? It's, it's helpful. Yeah, well, is that helping? I, I, yes, but I'm leaving yes. tomorrow, so I would hope. Oh, hoping. I need to critique that. Yeah. I owe you yeah. that time. You're not, yeah. No, I she, she, had, she has a class she has to teach, and she wanted me to look at some paintings. So. 20 students. I will, are you going to be here tomorrow? No, actually, what, yeah. But actually, what I'd like is for you to look at my work because instead of looking at my, at sure. my paint, not my other stuff, but this. What I'm working Which do here. you want me to look at? This What's or here? the other? This, this. Because oh, okay. uh, before yeah. you looked at some of the other. Okay. Uh, yeah, I do owe you that since you're not going to be here tomorrow. Wow. Probably about 15 minutes. But, but I'll demo for a while because I, you know, I don't want to sort of cheat anybody of time. Absolutely. But, but with only an hour and 10 minutes left, um, it would be like three minutes a person max, and I don't think I can accomplish much going around the room. No, this is no. so much watching. Plus, to be honest, I'm, I'm getting a little lazy and tired. And going around the room, you know, I've got a... <laughs> You've got a big party sit in different too, chairs. Right? Well, yeah. <laughs> Priscilla's doing all the work for that. I kind of crapped out on her when I got sick. So, so I'm going to owe her... She's, uh, <laughs> she's been working real hard. And, uh, and I was just sort of sitting around all night looking green. So, in fact, I think I went to sleep about 8.30 last night. Did you? You did? Oh. 9.30. <laughs> it's pretty well, late. Well, we didn't come. <laughs> yeah, I know. Phil was there, too. Oh, I put it mine. Trust me, you would not have one. I was not fit for company last night. I wanted to share something about that, though. With Europeans, they're a lot more familiar with the term aquarelle than they are watercolor. Well, that's just French for work, huh? If you can understand the pronunciation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, why? She had to say to, to me four times the next thing you get it. Oh, was she French or was she German? Aquarelle. French. She was Aquarelle. Yeah. I said in the yeah. background, I said, may we? <laughs> yeah, I... Um, this last month has been a French month. Why? Well, yeah, what's that? Uh, uh, tourist season around here goes by months. Some months are French. August is usually heavily Italian. There were I, um, Italians at the uh, okay. Canyon du Che. I was sitting there which painting. Makes, um, which makes that the funnest month, I think. There's Germans and Japanese, too. Oh, and the Germans. Yeah, a lot of Germans, too. Overall, but. I sold two paintings to Dutch people. Oh, well, mm -hmm. yeah. Early summer, there were a lot of people from the mm -hmm. In the winter, they're all in Aruba. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So they have had the service of the Oh, they do, yeah. <laughs> How cold does it get here? Um, uh -huh. January is pretty much for below freezing or at freezing every day during the day. Night yeah. times, hmm. teens. It'll get, it'll get down to teens at night. Yeah. 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 Seldom goes below zero. No, the lake huh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. It's not fun. 47 no, below at my house. Woo. What's that? What? 47 below at my house. Oh, you wow. can have oh, that. Yep, I've had that, that, that too. <laughs> and that Your nose hair's freeze. Wind chill of 100 below. Oh, my God. That's always. 
Yeah, well, count me out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had 30 below in Carson, New Mexico, west of town. But that's a long time ago. <laughs> I, I've been in Boulder and Denver when it got down to 30 below, and I didn't like it. Yeah, me too. I'm a lizard. <laughs> Then we hear from the weather service. So you're adding little guys now. Yeah, I'm just, I, I'm sort of playing with it. Things are things That's are falling sweet. apart here. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I was their horizon is now in. And you're just doing it where you have shadow. Yeah. Shadow, well, I'm not going to put a dark line where, where the sun's hitting sense. it because yeah. if anything, okay. if the sun hits it and rocks wet, it'll it spark us. David, that's fantastic. You know, I need to make sure that it lines up. Now, this section of the horizon will be a little closer to you because the rock actually is coming towards you. So then your your viewpoint is a few feet above the water if you're sitting in a boat. You know. um, so that you were lining it up and looking down the side of the horizontal. That's uh, oh, this. Yeah. I wonder what sure. you were doing. No, you know, you, you I thought you were showing it to Jerry. No, you're just looking to see if it's straight. You know? No, I, I get it. I get yeah. it. That's yeah. brilliant. Uh, <laughs> no, it's what people, you know, and you ever buy a board at Home Depot? Oh, I do you that. Know, you look of down course. And it's straight. Of course. Because most of them are in at Home no. Depot. No. Yeah. <laughs> Usually I bring them home and my husband says, you have to take those back. Yeah. They're, they're, not good. they're the ones that get me are the ones you buy and they're straight when you buy them and then they work. Between the Home Depot and the house? Uh, or between the time you use them and yeah. the next year, when you discover that the trellis you built is now <laughs> yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. They were green. So you yeah. put in a darker line back there, too? Yeah, and it was too dark, so, and I decided it was too dark right away, so I lightened it. And that, again, is an example of you look at it, and you, you ought to decide right away, do I like it or do, do, I, do I not like it? But sort of defining that horizon line just a little bit. Once I know where it's going to be, but you got to be careful when you do this. It's really easy, and I think I see a lot of paintings, you know, that have wobbly lines. Yeah. And I think tomorrow I'll probably discuss this in a little more detail, but. Uh, some of them are very predictable, you know. If I see a purse, if I see a painting that has a lot of things like this on it, or things like this, I know that what happens is all of their brush strokes are done this way. Oh, because it defines a radius, you know. That's why when I said you want to learn with the waves, and it's kind of Zen Fru Fru, but you kind of have to know how the waves move. You know, that requires a sort of a larger motion. But when you're doing these wet on wet washes and things, you kind of have to get into that big flow of it. And, and I will guarantee you that if you do all of your strokes as real small strokes with, with one finger or two fingers on the paper, they're all going to be curved. And it's going to be hard to get them straight. So one of the things that you got to practice is actually just drawing straight lines. That sounds silly, but you know, drawing straight lines drawing curved lines. Uh, and I'll probably spend um, a few hours a week, at least, uh, nothing but practice. I'll get an old piece of paper and I'll, I'll practice doing wash techniques or wet washes or things, or I'll practice drawing things like this. I doodle constantly when I'm doing Sudoku puzzles or anything else. I'm constantly doing this kind of thing. But, you know. Priscilla said once, "What is that? Some kind of code? Are you solving a puzzle with all these?" You know, I said, no, I'm "Just do it." Channeling something. But, <laughs> Channeling. I mean, which was silly anyway, because she's as good at solving those things as I am. But uh, practice, whether it's with the washes, which is what most people need most to practice on, or, or just drawing lines, straight lines, lines that are parallel to another line. It's hard to do. Okay, just to do that kind of thing. And a lot of people will sort of object. They'll say, you know, but I'm, 
you know, I want to do a painting. I don't want to just do all this exercise stuff. And if you look at professional baseball players, for instance, they spend more time in batting practice, fielding practice, throwing practice than any kid who's playing baseball. That's their profession, and they got to practice the basics of it. And painting is the same way. If you really want to get good at it, you got to spend some time just practicing the basics when you're not under the pressure of finishing a picture. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm getting a little hoarse. I guess I'm going to carry it with me. <laughs> But as I said, well, this actually is a pretty good exercise. Just, you know, you take a piece of paper and you, you try to draw a line parallel to the other one. Okay. If you can do that kind of thing, okay, freehand and fairly fast, it will really help when you're painting waves, painting a lot of things. Because you can instead of getting that kind of rough this which we see a lot i go around a room and i see a lot of these choppy uh people will they'll do a <clears throat> excuse me they'll do a layout wash and then they'll try to go over it and they can't match the underlying line well enough and they get these ragged edges and it's literally because you don't have the muscle memory that you don't have the athletic practice or whatever it takes to to draw an accurate straight line it takes a lot of practice to just you know to just sit there and do that kind of thing i find it easiest with lines that are straight like that to join points and go from one side to the yeah other side and 